Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I'm glad to see you again. If for any reason you wish to merge or combine two data sets in XPSS and you don't know how to go about it, then this video is for you. In my previous video, I demonstrated how to merge two data files by add cases procedure. But in this video, I will be demonstrating how to merge two data files in XPSS using the add variables procedure. My name is Titoka and this is Titoka Max Solutions, a YouTube channel for improving the knowledge of how to do things. Please join me to encourage education and learning by subscribing to this channel. And thanks for the encouragement. To merge two data files by method of add variables procedures means to add more variables as the name implies or to add more data columns to the active data set from an external data file. In this procedure, the number of variables or data columns you are adding to the active data set can be more or less than the number of variables or data columns of the active data set. Now, let's take a look at the two data files I wish to merge. By merging, I want to add the variables of this Excel data file on the right to the variables of this other Excel data file on the left. As you can see, the two data files have the same number of participants or cases, but they have different numbers of variables or data columns, and they also have different variable names. Hopefully, after merging the two data files, they will become a singular stream of data file like this. Now, let's go into XPSS and get started with the demonstration. Now, go to the menu bar, click File, and from the sub-menu, put your cursor on Open. And from the drop down option, click Data. From this open data dialog box, navigate to the variable location of your data file. My data file is somewhere in my document inside a folder named Data, and I will navigate there now. This is the folder containing my data files. But the Excel data files in this folder are not visible yet. Now, go to the Files of Type column and click the down arrow. And from the drop down options, select Excel. Immediately, my Excel data files become visible in this folder. Now, select the file named Average Income and Car Records and then click Open. In the dialog box that opens, ensure the box for read variable names from the first row of data is checked and then click OK to open the data file as our active data set in the data view window. To learn more about how to load data into XPSS, please see my videos on Introduction to XPSS Software for Beginners, Part 1 and Part 2. In this table of data, there are five columns. Column 1, Column 2, Column 3, Column 4, and Column 5. As you can see, the sizes of the columns are not uniform, and the data set are also not uniformly aligned. And to me, this is not beautiful enough. So in the interest of this tutorial and for sake of clarity, beauty and understanding, I want my data set to have equal size of column and be aligned to a uniform side. So I will click on the variable view button and proceed to the variable view window. Now, go to the column property and make the column size all 12 like this. And then also change the align properties to all left sided. To learn how to define or modify variable properties in XPSS, please see my videos on Introduction to XPSS Software for Beginners, Part 1 and Part 2, to learn more. Now, click on the Data View button to return to the Data View window. Here, you can now see that the entire columns have equal size and the data are all aligned to the same size. This is very beautiful. The next thing to do now is to use one of the variable columns as the key variable for this procedure. So let's use the age column as the key variable in this case. Right click on the age column and from the drop down option select sort ascending to sort the age in ascending order. Please note that this command is very important for you to execute because it is the key variable that helps to synchronize the two data files. If you fail to do this, you cannot be able to merge the two files. 
the next thing you will have to do now is load the second data file you wish to merge with this active data set. So let's load our second file named car insurance policy. Now go to the menu bar again, click on this folder icon named open data document. And this takes us directly to the data folder containing our data files. Again, click on the files of type and from the drop down option, select Excel to make your data files in Excel become visible in this folder. Then select the second data file named car insurance policy and then click open. A short dialog box opens again. As usual, ensure the read variable names from the first row of data is checked and then click OK to open the second data file in another SPSS data view window. In this table of data, there are nine unequal sizes of column whose variable data set are not uniformly aligned. The columns are column one, column two, column three, column four, column five, column six, column seven, column eight, and column nine. Now, click on the variable view button to proceed to the variable view window, and then make all the column sizes 12, and then set the aligned properties all left-sided so that this second data set has the same column settings as the active data set. Then, when you are done, click the Data View button to return to the Data View window. Kindly note that the properties of these two variables don't necessarily have to be defined the same way like we did in the Add Cases procedure in my previous video. Because in this Add Variable procedure, each variable occupies an independent column, and the properties of one variable in one column does not affect the properties of the next variable in another column. So you can choose to leave the variable properties of the two data sets the way they were, and the two data sets will still be merged as appropriate. Now let's minimize this second data file window by clicking on the restore down icon here. And then click on the upper part of this window and drag it down a bit to see the variables of the active data set in their columns. And then expand the right side of the window to the end of the screen. Like this, you can clearly see the number of columns occupied by the variables in the two data sets. As you can see, the active data set has five variables, while the second data set has nine variables. The next step now is to merge the two data sets and make them become one stream of data set consisting of added columns or variables. Now, go to the active data set window and proceed to the menu bar and click data. From the submenu, put your cursor on Merge Files. And from the drop down option, select Add Variables. Then the Add Variables dialog box opens, requesting you to select a data file to merge with the active data set. In this dialog box, there are two radio button options. One, the radio button for an open data set, which presents a box consisting of list of open data sets in a set files. And two, the radio button for an external XPSS statistics data file. If the second data file you wish to merge with the active data set is an XPSS file, then select this second radio button and then click on Browse and navigate to the data file. Select it and then click Open. But since for this video, our second data file is another Excel file, we will close this dialog box now and select the first radio button for an open data set. And since our second data set is an external Excel file, the SPSS system will generate a random name for the file and place it inside this box for you to make selection as appropriate. As you can see, the file inside this box did not carry the name of our data file in Excel, but a new name generated for it. Now, select the dataset tool inside the box and then click continue. A new dialog box named add variables from dataset tool opens. 
This dialog box contains two buses. The bus on the left is called the excluded variables bus, and it contains variables that will not be included in the merger, while the bus on the right is called the new active dataset bus, which contains the variables that will be included in the merger. Now, if every condition as mentioned earlier is met, the excluded variables bus on the left will be empty, as you can see, while the bus on the right will be populated by the variables that will be included in the new active dataset. As you can see, there is no excluded variables in this bus on the left, which means all the variables that are in the bus on the right are the variables that will be merged from the two data files. There are signs attached to the variables in the new active dataset bus. The asterisk signs denote variables of the active dataset, while the plus signs denote variables from the second dataset. If, however, there is any variable you don't wish to include in the merger, you can select the variable and then click on the transfer arrow key to remove the variable and move it to the excluded variable box. But for this tutorial, I wish to merge all the variables as listed in this box. So I will proceed to click OK. And just like that, the two data files have become merged as one stream of dataset. Here, more variables are added to the columns of the active dataset, and in total, there are now 14 variables in this new active dataset. As you can see, from column 1 to 5 are variables of the active dataset from the data file named Average Income and Car Records, while from column 6 to 14 are the data variables from the data file named car insurance policy that we added or merged from the second data file. This is how to merge two data files or two data sets in XPSS using the add variables procedure. You can proceed to save this data as a new merged data file using the file and save as submenu, or you can proceed to start performing your desired analysis using the analyze submenu. But right now, we have come to the end of this video, and I hope you will be able to replicate the procedure as demonstrated in this video to merge your two data files in XPSS. If you like this video and you want to see more video contents like this, please give this video a thumbs up and please subscribe to my YouTube channel so that we begin to send you notifications every time I publish new and useful content. Subscription is free. Thanks for your time and subscription, and I hope to see you again in my next video. Bye.